Well, there was a diggable target there. Modern half pence. They give jumpy, horrible signals. But it still found it in amongst the coke. So I suppose you could call that a, a win. Maybe. Looks like it's part of a chain or something. Nothing exciting and god damn, I told you it was cold. It's now hailstone and God bless England. How many waterproofs are in the car? This one is reading 1240. It said it was near the top, but I haven't managed to find it yet. I'm thinking somebody's buried a can. 1240. Could be a big penny. Could be a deep can. Ah, whatever it is. Ah, oh, it's a penny. Penny size. Extremely old and manky. Yeah, just giving it a little clean up there. George V, 1917 penny. It's got a nice patina on it, that actually, but it's quite sandy soil. So it looks like it's preserved it very well. Once it's cleaned up, it should be nice. This is giving a. Ri yeah, hello. Giving a ridiculous signal. <laughs> I don't know why, but. It looks like that's been sitting next to iron. A little rust on there, but that's actually uh, a sixpence, 1939. So it's only 50% silver, but that was given a really tricky signal. Oh, but I'm pleased with that. It's very mucky, but it's silver. Absolutely excellent. And I don't know why that was given a such a bad signal. It's only 50% silver, so I suppose that may be why. Get in. Just listen how clear this is. It's reading 11.42. And there's a nice red splodge in the upper right hand corner of the screen. So this is definitely getting dug. Seems quite shallow. It says five inches. I'm thinking it's possibly a modern penny. I hope not. I hope it's something better that I've just missed on previous visits. Seems to be a big coin ball, so I'll bring the camera in. Probe switched on. It is a coin ball. <laughs> Very heavy as well. Look at that. That's all quite loose, that soil. That's compacted, hopefully, around a coin. Yep. There you go. Whoops, George the Sixth Penny. Straight out the coin ball. And check that out for an imprint. Absolutely beautiful. 1946. Now I would have found that with any detector. It was only oh, three inches deep maybe. That's just purely one I've missed on a site that I've absolutely pounded with numerous detectors dozens and dozens of times. It just shows you can miss big targets, no matter how much you pound a site. Well, I had three attempts at trying to dig this one up. 
made three different holes, I just could not pinpoint it. It's reading 1222, which would normally be an awesome sign. You'd, you'd think, oh, it's a hammered coin or it's a gold ring or something. But um, I'm not thinking that. Possibly, oh, well, I would like to think it was an old threepenny bit. That's sometimes difficult. Nope, it's not. What's that? Ah, two shillings. Ah, oh, 1948. It's a florin, but it's 1948, a couple of years younger, and it would have been half, at least half silver. 1948. Yeah. Just made of muck. So you did well to find that, because that's definitely where the where yours was making the sound. There it is. It is, yeah. There you go. Can't quite read it yet. There you go, see whose it is. Just check there's nothing else in there. Sometimes when you get a penny, you might get another two or three in the same area. You know, if somebody's yeah. emptied the pockets out. Oh, better put the worm back. Right then. Hopefully this will be another coin. I think it's in there. So that's no, there it is. I just saw it. Oh, you've seen it? Oh, it is in there. Oh, I'll get it's it out. Another old penny? It's probably the same one. I'll check if there's another. Oh, that one's oh, in better condition. Yeah. That's. Um, Victorian. Oh, good. DC. No, D. Gee, Queen Victoria. Yeah. So that one's well over a hundred years old. <laughs> right, have another go. I'm getting up soon, that's it. Nice. Yeah, that's it then. Here's one that was reading 1022. Uh, looks like some sort of uh, metal, I was going to say metal, but it's very thin for a metal. Something to be worn. Could be the bottom of a medal, I suppose. Bit of a shield on it. Doesn't appear to have any writing on it. That's a decent find. I was reading 1022 on the CTX. And oh, maybe it's four or five inches deep. Right, check this out. Here's why going big and deep doesn't always work. I'm in a field here where there used to be some mines. There were lead mines, so there was a hell of a lot of activity here for centuries from about 1700 back over. I came with the intention of finding really deep coins in here because I know they're there. And this fella has been absolutely hopeless. Check this out. Just a nation of iron. Of course, I could always go with a smaller coil, the 11 inch or even the eight inch coil. But I'd rather just swap out and use the Deus with a 9 inch coil. The recovery speed on the Deus is second to none, it's absolutely lightning. Now as soon as I've started using the Deus, I've started finding things. It makes a hell of a difference. This, on a reasonably clean pasture, will outperform just about anything else. But in a trashy site where there's a lot of big iron and a lot of little fragmented rubbish, the Deus is the real king. Just getting little crackles and sort of sounds with this. I know it's not going to punch as deep as the CTX, and maybe the iron is very, very deep. That's maybe what the problem is. Could alter the CTX, put a smaller coil on, make it easier to use, make it more suitable for this particular site. But this little fella with a 9 inch coil. picks the signals out so much better. That's reading 72. So we might as well give it a live dig.
<laughs> there we go, we've got a coin. Ah, it's in really good nick by the looks of it. Yep, 1895 half penny. Widow head, Queen Victoria. Okay, what I'll do, I'll continue hunting with the deers. I'll identify another good signal, should one present itself. And then I'll turn on the CTX. And I'll leave the big coil on the CTX and I'll see if I can find it with that, as well as the deals. Right, mid-50, both ways. See what the CTX says. Between 1815 and 1514, jumping up and down a little bit. Certainly a diggable signal, though. And we've got a little piece of copper. Nothing spectacular. <laughs> so really, forget about which detectors they are. If the site is very trashy, very iron infested, and you really you can't swing it without getting numerous signals, you want to go definitely with a small coil, whether that's on the CTX or whether it's on the Deus or whether it's on the whatever you use. Smaller coils in more trashy areas definitely produce the goods. You can get better signals and you'll make more good finds. Now although this site is very very near to a house, which has been here since the 1600s, there, I've done this one before, I have been in this field before, I'm still making finds in here, but um, I am aware that there's another field a little bit further down the valley, also owned by the same landowner. And that's right near where the main mining activity was. So I think I'm going to take a trip down there, see what's down there. Hopefully it won't be as contaminated. I'll be able to make the most of the CTX. But if it is just as contaminated as this, I've got the deers. Either way, I'm covered. Let's get down there. And this is the awesome thing about having friends that live in the country come back to your car and you've got a tray full of free-range eggs really looking forward to that beautiful Well, this is the second field. It looks extremely overgrown to me. Uh, I'm not holding up much hope for this. It's a bit of a hike to get here as well, because I failed to use the footpath, which I should have done. So, hmm, what am I going to do? I'm going to scare that pheasant first of all. Then I think I'll go with the CTX and I'll head along this edge. It's quite flat and the grass isn't too long. It'll give me some idea of what's under the ground, and then I might head up into those trees there, see what's about.
iron, iron and more iron. I'm going to assume that this field is just like the other one, contaminated to hell, and I'm going to switch to the deals. Well, I've given it about half an hour with the deals, half an hour with the CTX, and the only targets I've dug have been big rusty lumps of iron. Absolutely nout in here. It's just so contaminated it's almost undetectable. I think this is just where they used to just dump stuff when they've been mining. Um, so I'm going to give up. Now people ask me when I'm going to make the next metal detecting video. You don't do enough detecting video as well. I don't get much time. And available time I do get, I like to spread out throughout my other hobbies, which I'm making a lot more time for now, as you've probably seen in the previous videos. When I do get time for detecting, I like to go places that are unusual, and quite often they end up like this, where I find absolutely nothing. So I would rather do that and put a detecting video out every one or two months than go to sites where I knew I could just bash coins day in, day out, you know? I, I want to I get out adventure a little bit. <laughs> but that, that's not good for making detecting videos. Anyway, there's hundreds of other detecting channels out there. If you want to see some good detecting channels, just go onto my channel, look at the recommended um, recommended channels there. I think it's the headline, something like, check these guys out. Quite a lot of the fellas in there are either bushcraft related or metal detecting. There's a lot of good metal detecting channels in there, so check those out if you need a metal detecting fix. I'm actually going to change strategy. I'm not going to go back to the other field where I know I'll find a few coins and a few bits of artifacts and so on. I'm going to have a slow walk back through the wood. I'm going to follow the track, but I'm going to go off the sides of the track. I'm going to look for really big old trees and go around them. Because if anybody's needed a toilet break or whatever when they've been walking up here or they've been travelling on a horse, chances are they're going to jump off and go behind a tree. And some of these trees might be really, really old. You never know, might find something there on the way back. Now unfortunately, there's no real massive old oaks here. But what there is, is numerous younger ones grown very, very close together. With a bit of a rotten stump next to them. What I think's happened there is, there's either been one cut down and it's grown away again from the bottom. Or well, there has been a huge oak there at one point that for whatever reason has just died and certain parts of it have continued growing. You often get that. You can sometimes get trees in more or less a ring around where the original tree was. So whenever I see a couple of oaks, or possibly three or even four together, around a really old knackered stump, that's a good indication that there has been a really, really big tree there at one point. So that's what I'm going to concentrate my efforts on in here. I've gone over the ground a little bit. It's very, very clean, so I'm going to use the CTX. Well, there's a sound that's too good to be true. It's reading 11.36 and it's given a beautiful tone. I'm thinking this is a knackered tin can. It's seeing it's shallow, it's giving a beautiful signal. But we'll find out. Well, it's so shallow it can be nothing other than a tin can, I think. <laughs> Don't believe it. Right on the top, and it looks like an old one as well. Very, very dirty. Looks like a half penny. Uh, give it a bit of a clean on my trousers. There you go. George V. That didn't take long. <laughs> well, I couldn't have missed that one. 
that gave a cracking signal and hopefully there'll be some more around here. Well, there is indeed something else in there. This one's reading 1128. And it looks like another half penny. This one is absolutely knackered with the acidity from the leaves. Look at that. Knackered. What a good start to hunting in the woods. Normally you don't find much. You know, following that little clue of the tree, just reading the signs, has already led to two coins. Oh, God. No. Can't see whose that one is. It's knackered. That's not a nice signal at all. But it's more good than it is bad. And I'm thinking shotgun cartridge. Hey! It's connected to shooting, but it isn't a shotgun cartridge. It's a little musket ball from a pistol. It's a nice find. Still very round as well. Get in and have more success here than I was in the fields. God, you know the finds can be so shallow in woodland, it's unbelievable. That was no more than an inch and a half underneath the surface. And that's another musket ball. In pretty good condition. Yep. Very nice. Give a cracking signal again. Couldn't have walked past that. Now I've got a cracking signal there. Reading 12.29 or 12.30. A very good signal. The end of a shotgun cartridge. That gave a really good signal. Normally they read a little bit further left than that. Yeah, that's all it was. What an anticlimax. Good. It's going to get dug. Hey, another musket ball. There you go. And when I was walking over here, there was a similar signal that I marked. So, there might even be another one lying around here somewhere.
Get in, get in. It's been hard work, but that looks like silver to me. I'll peel it off and hopefully there'll be a bit of an imprint left. Nah, not really. Nothing spectacular. Oh, at least we can see what it is. The Widowhead Victoria. Sixpence. Oh, can even see the date as well. Uh, 1896. That's so smooth, the muck's just rubbing straight off it. Often you get them with detail and you just kind of get the muck out between the letters. Yeah, but that's good. Good. That really wasn't that deep. It was underneath a big stone, which might have been throwing the signal off a bit, but it was certainly a dig into a diggable signal. <laughs> Get in there. What? Well, that's about it. I've had enough. I've been here about three and a half to four hours or so in different fields and woodland and so on. The finds haven't been plentiful, but they've been very, very welcome because there's a hell of a lot of trash all over. Even in the wood here, there's, a, there's iron just all over the place. You know, it's obviously seen a hell of a lot of activity over the centuries. Um, and most of the stuff is just crap in the ground. There's very, very few good finds. And just because I found that silver coin with the CTX doesn't make the CTX better. It was in a pretty much uncontaminated area of the wood just near me. And the Deus would have found it, the Garrett would have found it, a Whites would have found it, any machine would have found it, it wasn't very deep, and it gave a cracking signal. You'd have to get a really cheap, crappy machine to miss that. So really, I can't make any judgments about which machine is best, because they are best for different sorts of terrain. I like to think that the mine labs are the best on pasture, especially for deep silver, they just seem to love it. But when it comes to trashy, contaminated sites and skimming ploughed fields, you know, you, you kind of only search six inches deep or so, the Deus is incredible, absolutely incredible. If I was going out on a dig tomorrow and it was cultivated land, i.e. ploughed land, which is flat, I'd pick the Deus straight away. You can cover so much ground so quickly. The recovery speeds, the lightning, you know, you, you're finding tiny little targets. But if I wanted to hunt deep, and slow and pull up some deep silver, I'd go for the CDX. It does pay to have two machines. You can find deep silver with a Deus, but it's a little bit more hit and hope. And I really, really hope that XP have done something about that when they bring out the version 4 software, which is coming out this year, I think, sometime in 2016. I don't know much about it, but one of the issues is that it just it just doesn't seem to find that deep silver. If they can get this fella finding deep silver on pasture, it would be the best all-round metal detector you could ever buy. Hands down. Easily. I would scrap the rest of my detectors if this fella found deep silver regularly on pasture. I would only need one detector then. It is that good. And I also like this lad as well. I love the tones on it. I just love the fact that it hunts deep in pasture. I just, I love the machines. I love the ATX for under the water. I'm going on holiday in a few short weeks and I cannot wait to get into the shallow seas there under the water. Oh, it's an exciting hobby. It really, really is an exciting hobby. And sometimes the finds might not be very exciting. That's why I'm putting two or three hunts together just to try and show you some reasonable finds because 90% of the time, Anybody who goes detecting is just finding rubbish. Even on really good sites, there's so much rubbish there. You've got to dig through it to find the good finds. You do come across shallow targets sometimes, and how the hell is that so shallow? It's a, you know, it's a cracking target, 300 years old, big lump of silver, but it doesn't happen very often. Most of the time, you've got to work for the best finds, especially on pasture. That's why I love it so much. You've really got to know the machine to get the depth to get the ID at depth so you don't just walk straight past the signal. Um, skimming ploughed fields is a lot easier. 
that's where I would send the beginner. I would say, look, you know, get yourself on a club dig, ploughed fields, all the stuff gets brought to the top every year. You, you can blast along, and you're going to find some. You're going to find it so much easier than if you're hunting pasture. That's why I love pasture because it's it's a little bit like rifle shooting compared to shotgun shooting. Shotgun shooting, you know, you're blasting away. You've got a wide spread. Chances are you're going to hit something, especially if it's sitting still. Rifle shooting is a lot more precise. You're going for things at greater range, and you've really got to put that bullet exactly where you want it. And that's what you're doing on pasture. You're hunting for small targets or very, very deep targets. And you've, you've got to be very precise. Your machine's got to be precise. It's got to be set up right. If it's set up wrong on pasture, you're not going to be hunting very deep and you're not going to find much. Anyway, I'm waffling. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, check out my other videos. There's hundreds of them on the channel, all split up into playlists of various topics. So really, there's nothing more to say. On to the next one, if you're out, hope you have good luck, see you next time. Twelve forty all day long. That's getting dug. Ah, uh huh. It's an islet off a tarpaulin, I think. <laughs> That's not getting dug. It was right on the top. Yeah, I'll delete that bit.